Hi there guys, Ken here, your Thrifty Apprentice. And in today's video, we are going to be doing a DIY. We're gonna be creating our own watercolor brush pens. So I was going through my art supplies and I ran across two sets of brush pens that I have and I don't use them. Um, mainly because I, they were tucked away in a drawer and I haven't seen them. So here I have some recollection brush pens and some Jane Davenport Mermaid markers. So uh, both of those are two different type of kind of like watercolor. Or I think this is a oh dye base ink or a, a dye base, yeah, watercolor in here. And I think it's the same for these. And the recollections are not as juicy as the uh, Jane Davenport, but nevertheless, they serve the same purpose. So I thought to myself, instead of ordering some more, I would just make some. So as I ran across these, I also ran across a stash of liquid watercolors that I have. Um, and I feel so bad because they were sent to me by uh, Miss Diane from watercolorbeginnersandbeyond.com and I've had them tucked away in a drawer. I should have been used them and reviewed them and all those good things and I'm just gonna apologize because I forgot I had them in all honesty. So I figured they would go perfect for making these DIY watercolor brush pens and not spending any money, just using what I have. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I'll share this video just in case um, someone out there has, you know, some liquid watercolors that you don't really use. Well, you can turn them into brush pens and, you know, it, it'll, it'll put a little bit more joy into having a different way to use that, that product that you just have sitting around. So I went to my local Dollar Tree and went to their arts and crafts section. And there is a brand by the name of Crafters Square. And they have all these different art products over there. Um, there's acrylics and watercolors and all types of accessories. So they have these two pack of empty um, watercolor brushes or water brushes. And they're empty barrels. And it's two in a pack for a book. So I bought a lot of them. I mean, I'm like in, thinking to myself, okay, those are going to be perfect. Because it reminded me, you know, not as sturdy... Um, and not the same design, but it reminded me of the barrel of the um, Jane Davenport marker. So I was like, okay, cool. I grab a bunch of those, and then I grab this organizer um, to keep them all in. And I bought a few of these, some for pencils and uh, watercolor pencils and uh, colored pencils, things of that nature, so that I can keep them out. And if I see them, I'll use them instead of having them tucked away. So let me show you guys what I'm thinking here. So first off, I have um, a complete palette, honestly, of Ken Oliver liquid watercolors. And I have basically a mixing set with augmented colors in it. I mean, there are a warm and a cool yellow. Um, there's orange. We have Crimson, um, burnt orange. We'll just leave that there for a second. Sepia, which I'm not sure. That's a brown. So that's going to go with our earth tone. So let's put that there. Uh, there's phthalo green. And then terra verti, verta. That's a, looks like a earthy, a really earthy green. Let's see here. We have ultramarine blue and Merlot, which I'm assuming is like a whiny, um, cool red. So we'll put that there. Let's see what we got. Red, yellow, blue. So ultramarine and indigo. Red, yellow, green, blue, violet. Sepia, burnt orange. I'm gonna think. I think that burnt orange is more like um, a burnt sienna, or maybe an Indian red. So we're gonna leave that there, and I'm going to put the orange here in between the yellow and the green. Okay. 
So now here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that we take one of the brush pans and open them up. And then I'm gonna fill it with the watercolor, the liquid watercolor, which is in its concentrated form. I mean, you can add water to this. I'm just gonna squeeze it. Can you guys see it? I'm just squeezing it in there and filling it up. And I'm not sure how high to go. I think I'm just gonna fill it to the top right there. And then we'll put that back on. And voila. Now I'll just take um like a piece of masking tape. So here, let me, you always wanna sit these straight up. Let me sit that straight up and then I'm gonna grab a piece of masking tape. Okay. And this is also from the Dollar Tree. Just tear a piece off there. And let me see if I can find, I'm just gonna grab a pen here. Doesn't have to be archival, because this is on the outside. This is on the packaging. So and we're just gonna write the name of that color. Let me close it up before I waste it, I'm clumsy. So that's a Linzer and Crimson. And it's gonna, that's Narrow Barrel. So, let's do this first. We'll wrap the barrel there at the thickest, well, almost the thickest part. That tape might not stick. And then, maybe I can just write initials on here for it. Cause I don't know what it is. If I can get this pen to write on here. Let's see. All right, there we go. And then there comes, we'll just put an AC there. I don't know what it is. All right. And that's one down. And that's the idea that I have, guys. Just to, I mean, I know, it may be a little lame. I think it's pretty cool, personally. Um, so I have the Ken Olivers, and I have the, um, this is by Dandelion Paint Company. Oh, uh, Sarah from over at Let's Make Art. I believe this is their brand. Um, I'm going to feel, so, so I have that palette. That's a complete palette of colors as well. Then I also have Ken Oliver Crafts Liquid Metal Watercolors, which is a complete palette of these that I have as well. Now, I'm not sure about these, though, because I'm not sure if it's anything that's in here that would actually clog up the flow of the water brush. I'm not sure about that, but that's one down. We get them real low, and I'm just gonna put these on the outside. I guess you know that really could be the video, <laughs> that really could be all of the video because that's what I wanted to show you guys. Um, I will do a few more with you, and then we'll do a few of the other ones, uh, and then we will call that good. I'm just gonna wrap a piece of regular tape around this. Because that's, I'm trying to think, did this come from the Dollar Tree too? It might not stick. Yeah, that's giving me Dollar Tree vibes. It really, really is. I don't know. Because you know, the stuff that comes from the Dollar Tree has a low tech to it. It's, I mean, you know, it's nothing bad. It just is what it is. You get what you pay for, right? Um, yeah, that's not one to stick either. So we're just going to see if I can get that to act right. Stay there. Okay, let's do a few more of those. So I'll go ahead and just tear that off. And then we'll put it straight on the barrel. 
trying to preserve as much tech of it as we can. This just not good. This, this is just not gonna stay. It's just not gonna stay. I'm gonna try it anyway. We'll write an M on here for Merlot. Best we can. And then I'm gonna attempt to wrap this scotch tape around here, or I'm sorry. Okay. Just have to cut it a little longer, it'll stick. It'll stay. And then let's unscrew the barrel here. Guys, I hope this isn't too boring. I think it's a pretty cool idea. Uh, when I thought about turning the camera on, I didn't really think about the fact that, where am I going? Going. There, I think I put way more in there than I did in the last one, but oh well. Just got to remember to store them upright. And we're going to have to try some of these out, maybe. Um, okay, so let's do two of the dandelion. Okay, so how and we're, we're going to, I got to figure out how to distinguish these from the other ones, especially if we're just gonna be initialing the color. So, and I definitely need to swatch these out. So, that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so I swatched out just the Ken Oliver. I decided not to do the other sets just at this moment. I, th those are a whole nother video because uh, this is an entire set of paints. So I swatched out all of the paints. They are actually some really nice colors now. I don't have any experience with liquid watercolors, so I don't think that I have the um, expertise, should I say, or that um, I've used them enough to really be offering an opinion on what they, uh, the quality of them, should I say. All I can tell you is what I see in the results of the test that I performed. So um, uh, the first swatch down was really watery. Um, the colors held up pretty nice from wet to dry. They glazed pretty well. Um, they get really vibrant, or should I say, um, more valued, more saturated as you layer them. Um, they performed well in the salt test. That was really pretty. Look at that, that's really pretty. And that is, uh, what color is that? That is the violet that I used in there, that is so nice. And here, I was gonna do the lift test with you guys, so. Uh, let me grab paper towel here. And I'm just gonna use my, clean that brush. I'm gonna use my um, Royland Lang Nickel Mental. This is a scrub brush number eight. And we're just gonna get that wet. Make sure it's clean. Ooh, somebody's out there drag racing. So we're gonna just, and this is a cute little landscape I did, but we're gonna see if we can scroll back. I got damage in the paper too bad. I forget what this is. This might be cancer. Yeah, it's cancer. It looks like it's lifting off pretty well. Yeah, it lifts off pretty well. So salt lifts pretty well. There's the opacity test. They're really transparent. Um, and I'm assuming because they're dye based, they don't have any, I don't know if you would have fillers per se in liquid watercolors because again i don't really know that much about them i can just tell you what i see that's why i'm not going to ne necessarily review these i'm just kind of sharing you sharing with you guys what i see um i want to use more liquid watercolors before i ever try to get into reviewing i need to learn a lot more about them but 
These are really pretty. No doubt about it. Look at that. Look how saturated those colors are. Really nice. Um, so I thought to myself after doing this that, yeah, I mean, I've showed you guys how I make, how I would turn the liquid watercolor into a brush pen. Uh, you've seen the swatches and the little test that I did with them to see how they um, kind of look and perform. So I figured we might as well do a painting with them too. So let's make the video a video. <laughs>
there we have it. Can Oliver liquid watercolors into brush pens? I have to say, um, for my first go with liquid watercolors, um, I enjoyed it. It was fun. Uh, I enjoyed swatching and kind of testing them out and seeing what they would what they would do. And I enjoyed painting with them as well. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and so we just took uh, and I'm just I just got the primaries out here. Uh, as you can see, you have mixing a mixing set included in that complete um, twelve color set. You can pull just the three primaries out for mixing. And that's just what I have here in these brush pens as well. So I'm really going to enjoy using these. I know I am. Uh, and it's going to, you know, kind of force me to use the liquid watercolors more. Because now they're sitting out on my desk in front of me. And I'll grab them. And that's especially come in handy like mixed media work for value enhancement. I think that's going to be really nice. So... Let's just take a look at these once more before we wrap this up. I didn't intend for this video to be this long, but I hope you guys have enjoyed something that you have seen in it. Or maybe this is your first experience looking into liquid watercolors as well. So, um, you know, if it wasn't for the fact that I wasn't pretty sure that they're dye based and I have absolutely no idea of what any of the light fastness on them would be. Um, I'm gonna go do some research on it uh, to see now that my interest has been peaked in them. But I think the composition came out okay. It was just a really quick and easy sort of beginner landscape. Um, and I used some white gouache to enhance the highlights, but it, it turned out pretty well. Uh, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed using these guys. So there you have it. That's how you turn liquid watercolors into watercolor brush pens. Do it yourself, your own DIY um, watercolor brush pens. Also, guys, if you've liked anything that you saw in the video or heard, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Remember, giving the video a thumbs up helps get it in front of more viewers and helps the channel to grow. Growing also means sharing. Sharing is caring. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. I really, really appreciate it. Jump in the comment section. Let me know, have you used these? What do you think of the idea of turning um, liquid watercolors into watercolor brush pens, especially when you can find them as economical as like 50 cent a uh, 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 watercolor brush pen? That's, that was pretty cool. Um, local Dollar Tree, don't forget that. Um, head on over to the Thrifty Apprentice Facebook page and Instagram page. If I can uh, like and follow us there. Remember, you can share what you do with us on the Facebook page. And I keep asking you guys, utilize it. I would love to see the artwork that you're doing. And the thing, if you're using some of these products that we talk about all the time. And remember, as I tell you at the end of every single video, just keep painting. Mm -hmm.